Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've made any kind of video. Honestly, these past few months have been very emotionally draining for me. Just been dealing with a lot of different things, you know. 2020 man 2020 but i'm back i'm back in business i've been off social media for two weeks now my last post was literally an instagram story of me being outside an animal hospital so many of you have reached out to me sending me messages asking me how i'm doing asking me how baby's doing it made me very emotional and very happy that i have so many people that just care care about me care about little baby so in this video I'm gonna share how I found him how I was taking care of him and then what happened towards the end just in case you or someone you know encounters a similar situation in the future you know what to do because I spent hours and hours researching and learning about rabbits about two months ago I decided to go outside into my backyard I noticed this tiny little thing kind of moving around I'm like what is that and realized it was a baby rabbit I never seen a rabbit that small it was literally like this big then I realized that there are two more there's two more some animals if you touch the baby the mom will reject them because of the scent for rabbits it's not the same the moms will recognize their babies by sight not necessarily by smell I honestly could not resist I put on some gloves and just kind of lay my hand there and they were super super friendly they were so cute and precious if you do find some baby rabbits inside their nest leave them completely alone don't mess with it try not to touch them that is the one thing that will kind of scare away the mom if the nest has been messed around with out of these three babies two of them were always together then there was the other one that had a little bit more energy was kind of hopping around more and just kind of exploring things more and for some reason he kept coming towards me and just staying by my side I immediately was attached to this rabbit which ended up being baby so when you talk about feeding a rabbit first thing that comes to mind is carrots oh let me feed them some carrots they were still very very small so they weren't eating anything solid yet don't assume that the mom has abandoned them because the mom comes at night to feed them they stay away during the day just to keep predators away from the nest so i left them alone next morning i wake up go out there i noticed that one of them passed away the mom never came back i don't know what happened I'll, I'll tell you this there is a freaking killer dog around the neighborhood that gets loose sometimes and he has killed rabbits before so i don't know i don't know what happened to the mom but the thing is that she never came back so i'm assuming that the babies were outside their nest the day before just kind of looking for food and hungry i didn't know how they were supposed to look like at that age they were kind of moving around pretty well so to me they looked fine i went to the pet store found the supplies that i needed by the time i was back there was only one left and of course i took him in right away i fed him he started eating if you ever find a baby clientele that needs help try to take it to a wild animal rescue they will know how to properly take care of him it wasn't really an option around my area so i just did my research and try to take care of this little guy myself how to feed your baby clientele the moms feed them twice a day usually late at night and early in the morning i suggest buying a little syringe that doesn't have a needle at the end also a little bottle you can use goat milk but for me that was really hard to find what you can use and you can easily find this product at any pet store kitten milk replacement i suggest buying the powder one instead of the liquid one because once you open it it goes bad pretty quickly i also got rabbit vitamin drops to add in there you don't necessarily need to do this but i thought it helped and then because rabbit milk is supposed to be pretty fatty you're gonna need to get some heavy whipping cream just to add a little bit of fat into the mix make sure you buy something that has no sugar added or anything added to it so what you do is three parts kitten milk three parts warm water add some drops of the vitamin and then add one part of heavy whipping cream always test the milk on the back of your hand just to see how hot it is you don't want to give them milk that's too hot and it might burn them keep in mind that rabbits they like sniffing things a lot so be really careful of not allowing milk to go inside their nose because then they can drown be very gentle do it slowly give them a little break in between so they can breathe another thing that you might need to purchase i'm gonna put the picture up here on the screen bunnies need some bacteria in their system out in the wild they usually get this bacteria by eating 
eating the mom's poop. Don't freak out when you actually see them eat poop. That's okay, that's healthy. The mom, after feeding the babies, she will kind of lick their private parts. So you need to help your baby pee and poop, basically. Grab a piece of cotton ball, wet it with warm water, start rubbing their private areas just a little bit. On the cotton, you will see when the pee comes out and then the poop, and the poop is like tiny. At that age, like their poop is so small, it's just like a tiny little black dot. Now, living arrangements. Rabbits are very sensitive, they're very fragile. They can easily die from a heart attack of just being scared. So make sure that you keep them in a quiet area, no loud noises, completely away from any other pets. They will get scared and they can easily die. I want him to be in a small box. I wanted him to be able to have an open space. In case he needed to hop around, he had enough space to kind of hop around. I bought on Amazon a little playpen. I had a shoe box in there, I cut some holes, had this piece of fabric that I used to cover like half of the whole playpen. Just in case he wanted to be in a dark area, he can go, but if he wanted to be out in the light, he can just do that himself and just kind of figure out where he wanted to be. Make sure you have some hay. Eventually, they're gonna start nibbling and eating. Another thing that I suggest buying is animal bedding. I also have some towels that I put in there. Based on what I read online, you wanna try to keep them in a temperature between 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. What I suggest is getting a sock, filling it up with rice, tying it, put it in the microwave for like a minute, take it out and put it inside the cage. If it's cold and he need some warmth he's gonna get closer to the sock just to kind of get some heat I knew that eventually I would need to release him back out in the wild they're wild animals they're not meant to be pets so I would try to take him out there every day that way in my mind he would get some outside exposure so that he wasn't completely domesticated so that's basically how I was taking care of him he was doing really really good he was in good shape those of you that follow me on social media especially on Instagram you know how much I posted about him. I spent a lot of time with him. Honestly, he came into my life at a moment that I didn't realize I needed it. It brought some happiness into my heart. So I became really, really attached to baby which was what I named him. I would call him Baby. All right, so now let's talk about my last Instagram post. I started noticing that Baby was just acting different. He wasn't as active, just didn't have much energy. I didn't know what was happening, but he just kept getting worse and worse. And I'm like, okay, I need to take him to a doctor. Like he needs help that uh, like, I don't know what to do. He needs professional help. It was basically impossible for me to find wildlife animal rescue or a wildlife vet. I found this animal hospital that when I called, I specifically asked them, I'm like, hey, this is not a pet rabbit. This is a cottontail. Do you guys know how to treat cottontails? And they're like, yes, you can bring him in. So I take him, the vet comes out. He tells me that his temperature was so low that the thermometer was not registering anything. He told me that he was dehydrated and then he told me that his tail was peeling off. Baby has always had like a little area around his butt where he didn't have much hair there. He just had like a tiny little bald spot. So in my head, I thought he was referring to that, especially because I had been with him this whole time and I didn't notice his tail coming off or anything. So I, it didn't register because I had literally seen Baby minutes before. Once he said that, I was like, okay, so what do you guys need to do? And he's like, well, what we can do is just put him down. Minutes ago, I saw him and his eyes were still full of life. I'm not just gonna choose to put him down without even trying to help him at all. I said, no, what's the second option? He's like, well, we can give him a shot of antibiotics and then give him some fluid. So they went ahead and did that. They bring him back out, I pay whatever. I'm like, okay, so what happened? What's the diagnosis? They couldn't give me a reason. They were just like basically saying they didn't know. So I come back home, I take him out. His tail had basically peeled off. He was bleeding. He could not move the lower part of his body. He looked like he was half paralyzed. You have no idea how upset I got. Because one, why would you say you know how to treat this kind of animal when you actually don't? Why not just say we don't treat wild animals, we don't treat cottontails? Second of all, regardless of you not knowing how to treat a specific animal, as a vet or as a doctor, 
how do you not at least treat an open wound? How do you not clean it up? How do you not disinfect it? When I came back home and I saw him in that condition, I just, oh my God. I'm trying not to cuss, but it just really, really, really upsets me when someone that calls themselves a professional says that they know how to do something when they actually don't. He was still able to move when I took him there. When they brought it back to me and he came out, he was half paralyzed. Like he could not move his bottom legs. And then he's bleeding out of his tail. So at that point, I really did not know what to do. The worst part of everything was seeing the fact that his eyes and his face was still full of life. Like he was, he was fighting. He was fighting for his life. It just... When I think about it, it just, it makes me really sad. Because seeing him in the state that he was and me not being able to help him, it was very heartbreaking. The image that I still have in my head was him dragging himself close to me. While I was trying to look up places and hospitals I had put him in a corner. He dragged himself over close to me and just lay right next to me. So that just broke my heart because I just couldn't help him. Had he been kind of like his eyes kind of closed or half closed and then just kind of giving up, then it's easier for you to say, okay, let's just put him down so that way he doesn't suffer. But seeing him in that condition just still fighting i just couldn't i just couldn't just say put him down i got back on google kept looking and looking and i called and called in different places finally got to a lady that i guess she takes in rescues and takes care of them from her home that was basically my last resort i knew that by giving him up like that i most likely would not see him again but I also knew that there was nothing I could do and he needed help. So before leaving him there, I, I asked the lady, I'm like, if I leave him here, would it be okay for me to come back? Whether he survived or he died, I wanted to see him one last time. She said, yeah, sure. And that was basically the agreement of me leaving him there. So after doing research and research and looking up things, I came to find out that wild rabbits, their tails are really, really fragile. They can easily be detached. Depending on how it got detached, they can suffer from the spine. That explains why he wasn't really able to, to move his lower back. When I took him to the lady that she tried to grab him, he got scared. He took off inside this box and he moved his bottom leg. So that showed me that there was still some movement in there. Doing some more research and talking to different vets back in Dominican Republic that my mom was helping me get in contact with, I had hope. He just needed to start eating again and then just make sure that the wound was healed. So I kept trying to stay in communication with the lady. On the third day, she told me, oh, I don't think he's gonna make it. Do you want me to just give him an overdose so that he can pass away? I kept remembering his little eyes and, and how he still had life and how he was still fighting. I told the lady that I wanted to take him to another vet just for one last try and see see what happens. As soon as I said that, she, she said that he had passed away. It was just like, what? Honestly, I don't think he was still alive. I, I, I think she was lying to me, I don't know. It was very weird. The fact that we've been talking and then all of a sudden, the moment that I said, I'm gonna go pick him up, she says that, oh, he, he passed away. And then I was like, well, can I still go so I can pick him up and bury him? She's like, no, I need to dispose of him properly based on the wildlife requirements or whatever. I'm just like, like, what are you talking about? This thing, he was like this big. What's the big deal of me taking him and burying him. So I didn't trust her and I didn't believe her at all because of how her responses. I don't know, it was just weird. That whole week, I cried every single day. I was just crying and crying and crying. I felt like I was responsible for everything. Another thing, I just couldn't figure out how 
his tail came off. Like I could not figure out how that happened. That weekend I had some people over at my house. I don't know if someone tried to grab him and just grabbed him the wrong way. And then maybe his tail started peeling off then. I think about it, I mean, he couldn't do it to himself. Like in his cage, there was nothing that he could really hurt himself in that way. I don't know if when I took him to the vet, if they accidentally did that themselves when they tried to grab him I, I have no idea either way however it happened I just I couldn't stop blaming myself I've always been very motherly I love kids I love babies I will treat and love your baby as if it was my own and with this little bunny I literally felt like I had given birth to him i treated him like he as if he was like legit my own baby especially because he couldn't take care of himself he was in such a vulnerable state when i found him that i became very attached to him because i felt like he needed me my mom she's like i understand the way you're feeling we need to get you a pet so that your attention kind of goes towards something else the thought of getting a new pet I just didn't, it didn't feel right. I did not want a pet to begin with. I don't like commitment. I don't like having to worry about taking care of an animal or cleaning up after them. I did it with baby because he kind of showed up into my life and he needed help. So I gave him my all. But if it was by choice of me going to an actual pet store and me getting a pet, I, I wouldn't do it eventually she convinced me and she's like let's go she started sending me pictures my boyfriend and my mom took me to the pet store they had the cutest rabbits there i wanted one so bad but my boyfriend didn't want one he kept saying he just didn't want to see me go through that again you know rabbits are just very sensitive animals you have to be careful with them because i was still very sensitive and emotional i did we did end up walking out with a pet so this is the new member of the family let me introduce you guys to mi cosita linda he just woke up from a nap so here is armani or in english armani esa cosa esa cosita linda esa cosita <laughs> he's so cute he's two and a half months right now look at that little face my new best friend my new baby no i don't call him baby though He's a bad boy, but you're gonna be a good boy, right? Eventually, <laughs> eventually you're gonna be a good boy. So that's the story of what happened to baby and why I've been off social media. I just needed to kind of process all my emotions and just kind of get over that whole thing. So thank you guys so much for, for everything, for all the love. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Dile adios, dile adios, Armani, dile adios. Ciao! Ciao, ciao!